Hi, I am so thrilled to be doing this video right now. I can't tell you how long I've been waiting to want to do this video. It feels like it's been absolutely forever. And I know I said that a lot in 2015. This is not meant to be a apology video by any means. I just want to share that I'm, I'm really, really excited. Um, it is February something, <laughs> ninth, I think. Nine is like my, my power number. And um, I also think that today is like a new year for, is it the Chinese New Year or something? I don't, Lunar New Year. It might be that, not Chinese New Year. <laughs> okay, well, hi again. First of all, do you notice a difference in my backdrop behind me? I am so excited. Uh, this is really just the tip of the iceberg, although one of my favorite parts about what I've done in 2016 so far is that I started redoing my home and the shelves were a really, really big thing, a big, big project. I spent probably close to a month going through my home and organizing it, cleaning every nook and cranny, going through virtually every single item in my home. No exaggeration. I would say aside from my bookshelf, which I haven't done yet, I have probably touched everything that I have. I don't live in a huge place, but it took so long. And I'm. it has been the most heart-opening, expansive, skin-shedding experience, layer-shedding, that makes more sense, uh, that I've had in a long time. I, I honestly feel like a different person, and my home feels completely different. And not because of the shelves. The shelves are a very, very recent addition. They went up a, two days ago, I think. Before that, though, I was just in complete awe of how different this place felt through all that cleaning. So in addition to actually cleaning, sweeping and dusting and and uh, that sort of stuff, <laughs> I was trying to think of other words for cleaning, I have repaired items because I read in a feng shui book that having broken items in your home is actually not good for your energy, especially financially. And I found that to be a huge difference. I had like various odds and ends lying around that were like, I'll fix these one day. And then I was just like, I'm just going to fix them. So I glued them together. I sewed some things. Uh, and that just felt really cool to accomplish. I recycled a ton. I had all sorts of paper around that needed to be recycled. I had receipts that needed to be organized, especially because we're approaching tax season before we know it in about two months. So all my receipts are nicely organized and I also accomplished some tax related tasks. And I've been organizing my computer. I've been organizing my file system on my phone. I've went through every item in my kitchen and got rid of foods that I hadn't used or that I expired. I started consuming foods that, need, that just were sitting there waiting to be eaten. And same with my bathroom. I didn't eat anything in my bathroom, but I went through and organized every item in my bathroom and then purposefully started using everything in there. I have so many samples lying around, just like small little packets of things. And now I just make a point to use at least one new thing every day. So in addition to experiencing them, I'm also cleaning up that clutter. I went through my closet. I have one big walk-in closet here and I went through all my clothes. I went to a clothing swap a few days ago. I brought some things to Goodwill. I sold... I think like one thing, a Halloween costume at a secondhand store. And I got some, a few new clothes, including this shirt that I'm really loving because it's super cozy. I mean, these are all just examples of how transformative the beginning of this year has been so far. And, and I say that not only because I'm excited and I want to share that with you because I feel like you're an old friend that I haven't talked to in a while, but also to kind of start to summarize what I've been up to. And, you know, I haven't created a video in a month and a half on any of my channels. I 
don't know if I've done a Periscope. I don't think so. I've been doing stuff on Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. So I'm still really active on those. But in terms of video creation, I just haven't really wanted to. And I've had a sense of guilt, as I've explained. I, I often do when I don't create content, video content specifically. I feel really guilty. And that's something I'm working through. In addition to all this cleaning, I've been doing a ton of research, a ton of studying, a ton of brainstorming, writing, and preparation for some big projects that I'm working on. And uh, just the reading has been so fantastic. I've been slowly integrating a meditation practice. I've been just or I organize. Oh, this is huge. Okay, so speaking of organization, my whole organization path started at the end of December when I was home with my parents for the holidays. I was home for, I think, 15 days, was it? Something like that. And I was determined to go through my email account. I have a separate email account where I get all my newsletters. So anything that's not like eco vegan gal related or personal related, anything that's like kind of businessy or just like the typical weekly newsletters you get when you sign up for people's newsletter, uh, they were sitting in this inbox and I had close to 2,000 unread messages. And that felt very overwhelming, as you can probably relate to. Many of us get into that situation. And um, I decided that I was going to sit down and, and read every single one of them, organize them, and start implementing things. And I learned so much. There was so much information in these thousands of emails, and I'm still going through them every day. You know, my inbox fills up again. So I've been have a daily practice for almost two months now of going through my inbox, reading emails, organizing them, and implementing them. And that has been transformative. I've also been really into reading books and I have so much to share on that end. I'm gearing up to do a favorites video for the main Eco Vegan Gal channel, and there's one book in particular I cannot wait to share. And a friend of mine, or more of like an acquaintance, wrote a book that well exceeded my expectations. I really want to talk about that one too, because it's kind of on the spirituality side of things. I'm reading a great book about success right now, and I'll be getting back into the healthy balance vegan bot or yeah is that how you say it my series on the main channel about taking care of your body I'll get back on track with those books soon to relaunch that series so I just feel as you can tell so refreshed so awakened so inspired and just like weight has been lifted off me through transforming the energy by reducing all this clutter through just organizing things, through taking care of stuff that's been sitting around, needing my attention. It's crazy how much energy that absorbed of mine. It's crazy how I would wake up on days and just look at my place and feel immediately overwhelmed because I would the first thing I would see when I opened my eyes was stuff I needed to do. Now when I wake up, I'm so excited to be in my home. I'm just like, wow, I can't wait to start the day. My place smells good. It looks good. It feels good. Everything about it is organized and I know where everything is. And there's just, oh, I just, I want to pass that on to you as well if, if you've been dreading that. But, you know, it takes time. I've been in this place for almost three years now and it's a tiny space, but it's amazing how much accumulates. And I kept putting that stuff off because I simply wasn't ready. And I think that that's been a huge lesson for me recently is doing things when I'm really ready instead of forcing it, instead of feeling guilty that I haven't done something yet, really just going with my own personal flow. And that was part of the reason I felt inspired to record this video just now. I was reading a great email about this and they mentioned guilt and I thought, I do have a lot of guilt because I was raised and I was conditioned through school and through other people, work experiences, that things need to be done a certain way and if they're not done that way, then you're not gonna be successful, then you're not gonna be a good person, then you're failing somehow, you're letting somebody down. And I've been carrying that weight around with me for so long. And I think 
I'm a, you know, I want to pause and say I'm a major strategizer. I love making lists. I love making plans. I really believe that that is a key to success. However, it's also very important for us to find our own flow and go with the timing. In fact, I wish I had the the book I'm reading on hand with me. It would take me too long to go find what I want to share with you at the moment. So we'll have to do this another time. But there is a great quote in this book about how we shouldn't force ourselves into doing things. And that comes into play in so many aspects of our lives. You know, of course, there are times when forcing ourselves to do something, to try something can be good for us, like working out, for example. I often have to force myself to go work out. But uh, eventually, it'll feel good. And when it does feel good, you'll know that you're forcing yourself to do the right thing. I think when we force ourselves to do something that doesn't feel good, then it's clearly not the right thing or the right time. So it took me a while to get into that um, that um, habit with my home. And it's also a good reminder too, though, is that a lot of the times we don't know what's on the other side of something. So something that we're dreading and putting off, when you do finally get into it, the results can be exponential. They can be so much greater than you imagined and so different. So it's important to see if you can lean into something. You see if you can push yourself over the edge. See if you can encourage yourself to get ready faster. <laughs> that can be helpful. You know, for me right now, and actually for a while, it's been meditation. I've been, I've been knowing that I should create a meditation practice. Everybody recommends it for so many reasons. And it's been a hard practice for me to get into. But what I found is I'm leaning into it and figuring out in my own way, as opposed to trying to do it the right way, the way that other people are doing it, is finding these little moments in my day where I can meditate, even if it's just for a few seconds or a minute. And even if it's not in the morning, a lot of people like to meditate first thing in the morning. I honestly love to jump out of bed and just start my day. I ha- It takes so much for me to not turn on my phone immediately. And that's something that I'm working on too. I just love seeing text messages from my friends or seeing what emails come in. Like that lights me up. But that's a whole nother topic because there's all sorts of studies done on why we get lit up when we see notifications on things. So there's, you know, I think it is important to to get into a practice and try things and see, do you really need to turn on your phone in the morning? You don't really. But anyways, I uh, feel like I just have so much to share with you. And this video is really exciting because it's like uncorking it. And I feel like now that I've I've done this after all this time, I will be able to get back into the flow with this, I hope. But as is the theme of this video, I don't want to force myself. I want to go with the flow. I want to be authentic. I want to give you my best self. And the time that I've taken away from creating video content has been time very, very well spent. It has been time that I have really been able to delve into other aspects of my life that needed attention. And because I gave it attention, I have created so much beautiful, positive energy and momentum that I didn't have before. I was able to just kind of release a lot of things that were stored, you know, literally in the dust of my corners or in the broken stuff or whatever else, you know, that weight has been lifted and that has freed me up to move in a different way, to experience things in a different way and to share myself in a different way. So I'm, I'm learning to accept that and be, be okay with, with uh, the lack of consistency in that sense. But I want you to know how much I've missed that. As I've said many times before, my favorite part of creating videos is feeling connected to you. I think that's the beauty of YouTube and, and social media in general is there's this connection. Even when we're not talking live, I can feel your energy. I can... I. I see it in in the comments, in the emails, in the social media messages. You know, people have been writing me recently asking when I was going to do my next video, and that you know, I was I was translated in, that into some personal guilt. But really, there was so much joy and gratitude in receiving those messages and knowing that you are there on the other side of this, that you care, that you want this, that this 
brings you something, some joy. You're getting something out of this. And ultimately, I do these videos for you as much as I do them for myself. And uh, I will say that I'm going to be, I'm taking an um, indefinite period of time off from reading YouTube comments. And I'm working on a way to put together a system that'll work better for me and for you. So if you do leave a comment in this video, which I assume you many of you will, I probably won't see it in the foreseeable future. I don't know. I might change my mind, but uh, I would. I just want you to know that I, I care and I, I feel the energy in some way or another and that there will be a way for us to communicate more. But Snapchat's great. <laughs> I love connecting with you guys on Snapchat if you're not there. Twitter is not dead in my opinion, even though a lot of people say Twitter's dead right now. <laughs> I don't think it's actually dead. But I'm all over social media. If you write me a message, I'll read it there. And I will do my best to respond. Because I would love to interact with you about the subject matter. So, um... Gosh, I, I feel like this this video is over, but I have so much to say and to share and, and uh, to gush over with you. And and I just think this is really exciting to me in my first video for 2016 because it represents where I'm starting off on. And um, it feels really good. Thank you so much for being here, for spending your time with me in this video and for being patient while... I've been shedding these layers, transforming in new ways, building up this energy. So much goodness to come that I'm working on for you behind the scenes and can't wait to give it all. Okay, I'll end this video sharing this little card from Chris Carr. You are awesome. There you go. <laughs> okay, bye.